We're going to check out some more of my uh, wonder berries and some of my um, just plants that are growing on the ground, some of the so-called noxious weeds. <clears throat> First off, it's uh, recommended for harvesting of uh, wonder berries that you wait for them to naturally fall as opposed to picking them in this stage right now. The berry in there is going to be extremely green and when they um, naturally fall they have a, a papery sheath around them. It looks like a Chinese lantern. That's why it's actually the generic term is uh, Chinese lantern. Yeah, actually this has been eaten by a slug. Let's try that again. Um, See now, this is the recommended um, stage for edibility, and um, I'm telling you that this is quite possibly a toxic, if not poisonous, berry, and if you're not preparing it properly, I wouldn't eat it. Um, The taste of this berry right now, I mean, it's very foul and nasty, and um, there's really nothing that's telling you that that tastes good and that you want to, you know, put that in your mouth or eat that. Um, I bioassayed this berry a few different s stages, and um, this is a solid yellow-brown without any um, noticeable moisture leakage. And what they do is, is they tend to start, um, I don't know how to explain it, but they start getting wet around the outside as, they, uh, as the liquid inside of them starts uh, um, evaporating or something and they start shrinking. And you can go from this, this is the first stage of yellow right here and it's still hard and there's still a lot of seeds in there. And it gets to this darker browner stage here. And as far as I understand, that's supposed to be a good edible stage, but I would not recommend eating that berry. And the, they also say that um, that the green, now this is tiny and immature pretty much, but the harder green is still too poisonous, but that's the only style that I prefer is a harder green. It's more tartar. And um, in my opinion, eating that berry right there will make you sick um, when it's dark brown like that so I'm not sure um, how to go about judging that except to say that there's probably possibly different stages of this flower and or berry and or I don't you know I don't personally get sick I'm just saying that um, to the best of my knowledge bioassaying this it has um, toxic effects <clears throat> On another note, um, we have these weeds, these plants, I, I planted this rock um, thing here, but this grass, Gramacea, or Andacea, is um, holding up the roots and stuff, for, it's, it's taking the poisons out of my flower bed, and um, they're absorbing the radiations and the different chemicals and stuff that are in the ground, and they're cleaning it and making it and they're um, making a, 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 um, a canopy for the worms and um, um, different um, lizards and different things that I've got around here. Um, so this right here, um, these are clovers. These clovers are burr clovers and they, they are really good at sucking down um, the uh, radiation in the soil. Um, at the same time, the bur clovers are uh, very, um, they actually put off, you know, really hard burrs and they're not a friendly weed as far as walking around or um, taking over your yard goes. They will take over your yard and they'll be really, um, they'll put off really hard little burrs that'll get rock hard and you can't 
they'll they'll go through any extreme amount of uh, um, weather in order to live <coughs> live throughout the next year. Um, this right here, I'm not sure what this is. It's uh, one of the milkweed type families, meaning that it puts off a white milk. And this is why we're out here. I want to talk about this. It's kind of loud now. Damn it! I didn't realize that my neighbors were gonna start fucking making so much noise. Um, anyway, so this plant right here has got, um, arrowhead point leaves. Okay, they're not heart-shaped, but they're purplish and reddish. I have a heart-shaped leaf, and, um, it's kind of the color of kale almost. It's got a red, a red center, and it's got a really thick stalk, and it, um, it's got really point little um, like spikes on the edges, but they're not they're not um, they won't poke you or anything. But like I said, it's like a milkweed family, which means the inside has um, white sap, white milk. That typically, um, if it was a dandelion and other families in the same sense, um, that have the white sap come out of it is uh, typically a, a poison or an alkaloid that is known to be medicinal and poisonous at the same time. There's, you know, different quali qualities of it. So, and there's different types of white um, latex is the term that comes out of plants. So that's not a standard, but it's just something I'm trying to point out that some people are so allergic and so reactive that just touching the white latex of uh, dandelions can, um, is an extreme diuretic. It, you know, makes them have to go to the bathroom, and at the very least. Um, at the same time, it's a wine and a food product that people eat. So, um, this plant right here, this heart-shaped leaf thing, I have no idea what it is. It's a noxious weed. It's just, you know, it's a weed. And, um, tastes good. But, like I said, it's uh, quite possibly poisonous. Um, no idea. Um what it is um, but it definitely got that white stuff in there and so this right here is a, a I can't remember if it's a dandelion or a black eyed Susan or a carrot <laughs> kind of looks like a carrot um, I, I can't recollect um, what it is this right here is a pretty invasive uh, plant. This is going to grow really big and it puts off flowers. And I'm not sure um, what the name of that is either. So, um, this, this will put off, uh, this is a really a red stem and it's going to be really thick and it's going to grow, you know, a few feet tall. And um, as a weed, this would this would take over your yard so it's a nice plant but remember that it will take over your yard um, this right here I think might be some morning glory coming up it looks like heart-shaped leaves and um, I don't know it's pretty small still The mold or um, the ground surface, like I said, it's really important to have um, different levels of uh, grasses and plants and stuff to allow different things to grow. And in my area, I'm, uh, you can see this is one of those bird clovers, this thing that's hard and spiky. And um, it's built to, uh, well, you can't really see it, but it's it's built to be all spikes and just a little teeny pinwheel and this thing will will just fall down into the cracks of uh, dirt and stuff and live all throughout the year until the time is just right and then it'll pop open and it'll regrow really hard to eradicate the easiest way to do it is by hand by just simply not allowing your weeds to grow out their flowers or to be pollinated so for me I allow things to 
take over the ground and stuff and um, and that cleans the soil and then easily you know eradicate it afterwards um, when it comes to pulling weeds it's really simple to um, do that <clears throat> and the easiest times to do that is not in the time of uh, when you feel like it but by season and knowing the plants or weeds gross and or areas so like I said for me it's actually important that I build up this whole wall right here um, so the roots and stability of the ground can get stable we got some uh, um, let me see the last couple berries matter of fact here we go I don't know if you can see that but the last berry of this um, I can't remember the name of it actually right this second I have some equistium, this horsetail um, coming up and um, some leathery ferns and different things, strawberries. Um, anyway, so back to the weeds is that you want to, um, right now it's just after a rain is a good time um, when the ground is really soaking wet though is um, when you want to uh, pick weeds. You don't want to pick weeds. You want to make sure they get nice and burly like this. It's really simple. And you just get down, you know, and, and just give it a second to get to get to get the whole um, root ball here. Uh, where are we at? Now you see I'm not I'm not just grabbing things and ripping them out. I'm getting down to the bottom to the surface of the ground here. And just take the time to, to find as much of that whole section as you can so you see this is still connected but now I've got a really good grab of the whole thing and because it's soaking wet outside the roots open up and they release their hold on the rocks and everything and they allow this to just easily come right up now if you try to grab that same root in the middle of the summer it would be extremely hard and what would happen is like a lot of people when they just grab things and they just go you know and it, all it does is it rips off the top and it allows that root to keep growing out the bottom and so you want to get really good hold and jiggle jiggle back and forth get a good hold jiggle 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 and you can jiggle the whole root ball up and then um, I shake it off a bit you know, people are worried about having um, grass seeds and stuff but um, that's just not reality um, the seeds are going to be wherever they are and um, leaving big holes in your grounds not you know too useful so simply um, by hand if it's your yard you'll find over time you'll be able to do this really quickly and simply and you won't have to really go about it in the future and um, it'll be like a basic maintenance um, I prefer to grow chamomile so um, for me I rip up this burnt clover here which I haven't really you know maintained in a year or so but I, I um, clear paths and that way you're not just randomly going about it because when they dump their seeds they're gonna go everything's gonna grow right around it again that's where the seeds are so by clearing a path you have a clean area so now you do a little to the left a little to the right and then everything stays clean that way and you have opener areas and then just keep working in the same sections in the same sections and you'll have opener clean areas that will not be able to get re um, um, the weeds won't be able to grow back that quick now, if you just randomly go throughout your yard and pick a weed or two every once in a while or only rip off the tops of them, then you're going to find that you're going to have an increased amount of weeds because they're able to propagate or regrow really easily because um, all you're basically doing is trimming the tops of them off for them and that helps them grow better. So, like I said, by, by following the, the, um, a path you can um, clean out your yard really easily and keep it that way and then at the same time you can also maintain specific plants um, like I said I prefer chamomile so 
there's not that much um, on this side of the yard and I've got just a bunch of um, a bunch of the, uh, burr clover here but it's not that much because you see as big as it looks this is only mostly off of one or two stems it's a creeper so by getting the base of it you can take up the whole plant really easily and um, you'll find it's not that hard of a it's not that it's not that complicated um, to keep a yard clean This is some of my Erica, it's just barely started to, um, I planted this recently along with this Astralagus. And um, this Astralagus is um, pinnate leaves. This is a local plant, local weed. Um, it's a legume, legume family. And it's going to be another couple months before it um, flowers, possibly. It's a creeper vine, it's a vine, it crawls vines out through everything and the um, Erica is a heather this is a heather and this is a really nice plant to grow um, for uh, just aesthetic looks it puts off bells little little bell flowers that um, if you look right down the centers of them will be black the outside will be white and the inside will be black and then it um, throughout the season it dies into an orange orange colors that are really nice and this because it's a new plant it only has those at the top this is off season these flowers and this is going to die off and then this whole plant will start regrowing again um, or I mean reflowering and I've got some new shoots of uh, ferns coming up as opposed to these old or dead ones and uh, tiger lily shoots that are going to come back up and um, more wonder berries and um, yeah I got a lot of stuff so anyway Erica is a beautiful plant I totally recommend this as a hedge or something um, when you have um, the whole plant covers up with those little white bells and it looks really really nice so all right